Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief. All the AI headline news you need in five-ish minutes or less. Today, we are starting with a discussion around AI in markets. There has been a ton of commentary around this and what you need to understand if you don't necessarily pay a ton of attention to macroeconomics or the stock market or the economy in general is that this has been an extremely, extremely weird year. We have been, on the one hand, under the threat or anticipation of a recession for going on the entire year, even farther, back into last year as well. Yet at the same time, stocks have done extremely well this year. One of the biggest drivers of that is, in fact, AI. Alex Kruger, who's a macro analyst, wrote a whole thread earlier this week about why the common interpretation that a recession is coming and that it's going to be bad is wrong. And one of the points he makes is about artificial intelligence. Alex writes, Markets are forward-looking and the AI revolution is real. The world is undergoing an AI revolution comparable to the internet evolution or the industrial revolution. NVIDIA's earnings have just skyrocketed. Alex goes on, Analysts estimate AI could replace up to 25% of current employment in developed countries, while generative AI could raise annual productivity growth by 1.5 percentage points over 10 years, and this productivity boost could eventually increase annual global GDP by 7%. Is an AI bubble forming, he asks? Likely so, and it's just getting started. Now, with AI-related stocks doing so well, this question around whether this is a bubble, another tech bubble in the long line of tech bubbles, has been front and center for many market participants and analysts. Goldman Sachs analysts have recently argued that the AI hype is real, or put differently, that AI is more than hype. They wrote, This feels very different from previous tech bubbles. Cash Rangan, a software analyst at Goldman Sachs, said in an interview in their latest Top of Mind publication, quote, AI probably isn't in a hype cycle. When a unanimous verdict exists among the technology providers that a technological shift is actually happening, it's real. And when customers start to become interested, it's not hype. And customers are interested. Now, Fortune tries to put a little bit of meat on that bone, pointing to a recent survey from Upwork Research of 1,400 U.S. business leaders that found that 73% of C-suite execs are currently actively using generative AI in their organizations. The CFO of AT&T told Fortune last month that the company had already saved, quote, hundreds of millions of dollars by using AI to improve employee efficiency, and they're even in the process of rolling out their own generative AI tool called Ask AT&T. Fortune also pointed to a June Bank of America research survey that found that 59% of consumers had already used ChatGPT. Another point that Goldman Sachs made is that unlike previous tech hype cycles, which were dominated by startups, instead the AI boom was not just startups, but in fact being led by some of the biggest companies on the planet. This, Rangan said, quote, makes it less likely to fizzle out or take a long time to get going. We're having discussions with the CIOs of global corporations who are amazed at the productivity benefits this technology could bring if deployed internally. And all of this is occurring at a time when the market is rewarding productivity gains. So this doesn't feel like a hype cycle. Now, as someone who has been around a lot of hype cycles, going back to Web 2 and social and mobile, and then, of course, crypto and Web 3, I personally do think that there is something categorically different about AI. That's not to say that, one, startup valuations won't be way out ahead of where they are, or two, that startups that probably shouldn't get funding will just because they've slapped AI in their pitch deck, or three, that all of the uses that we're imagining for AI right now will actually come to fruition. But what I do know is that this is being driven not by some media frenzy, but by the simple fact that when people use ChatGPT or MidJourney or one of a handful of these other tools, the world divides itself cleanly to them into before this tool and after this tool. Yes, we might see excessive valuations. Yes, we might see market dislocations. But this is a real phenomenon, and it's not going away. Now, related to all that, a different banking giant, Morgan Stanley, says that Microsoft will ride generative AI to a $3 trillion valuation. Analysts have set their price target for the company shares at $415. That implies a valuation of about $3.1 trillion. In that same report, the analysts named Microsoft their top pick among large-cap software companies and said that they're in the best position to benefit from AI. They wrote, Generative AI looks to significantly expand the scope of business processes available to be automated by software. Microsoft stands best positioned in software to monetize that expansion. What's more, Morgan Stanley points out, even though Microsoft has seen a 42% share price increase this year, they argue that the valuation is still reasonable based on historic price to earnings multiples. Now, if Microsoft did become valued at higher than $3 trillion, it would be only the second company to do so, with Apple making history last month as the first company to hit that milestone. 
Now, moving on to something that we covered earlier in this week, the AI content experiment is not going all of that well. Recently, companies like CNET and Gizmodo's parent company announced that they would be going more all-in on AI-generated content, and almost immediately, people started to notice very error-filled articles hitting their publications. Earlier this week, Variety published a piece called Gizmodo's io9 published an AI-generated Star Wars article that was filled with errors. They write, The AI-generated story was headlined a chronological list of Star Wars movies and TV shows. Among other issues, the article presented the titles in a numbered list that is not actually in chronological order. This led to the deputy editor at io9 and Gizmodo tweeting, As you may have seen today, an AI-generated article appeared on io9. I was informed approximately 10 minutes beforehand, and no one at io9 played a part in its editing or publication. I'm not totally sure how saying that no one on your editorial team had a hand in the editing of a piece that went up on your publication is a good idea, but hey, here we are. In another area of AI content farming, people are noticing just how much Amazon's Kindle Unlimited has been totally flooded by AI-generated books. Author Caitlin Lynch wrote, The AI bots have broken Amazon. Take a look at the bestsellers in teen and young adult contemporary romance ebooks top 100 chart. I can see 19 actual legit books. The rest are AI nonsense clearly there to click farm. Amazon, what are you doing about it? TechRadar writes, Self-publishing, such as via Amazon's Kindle Direct program, has become a way for many genuine authors to bring their work to the public and build a following without the help of a large publisher. Because these self-publishing capabilities are purposely easy to sign up for, it seems anyone can generate endless AI-written books and upload them to be sold on Amazon's ebook store and make them available for reading via Kindle Unlimited. Now, apparently, after that tweet from Caitlin Lynch, people noticed that many of those AI books had vanished from the bestseller lists, presumably removed by Amazon. However, the books themselves were still available for purchase. TechRadar says, The mass uploading of AI-generated books could be used to facilitate click farming, where bots click through a book automatically, generating royalties from Amazon Kindle Unlimited, which pays authors out by the amount of pages that are read in an ebook. So it doesn't matter that these books disappear. The people running such a scheme could just upload as many as they like to replace the removed ones. This is not the only place that I've seen this complaint. Another platform, ha- another platform having this issue is Etsy. This led to The Atlantic publishing a piece last month called AI-Generated Junk is Flooding Etsy. Coloring books, stickers, mugs, and t-shirts are being pumped out by AI-assisted hustlers. According to the amateur online business advertisers of YouTube, the age of easily accessible AI is the age of asking and receiving. ChatGPT and other AI tools are ascendant in popular culture, as is the idea that you can ask them for anything. You can even ask them to make you rich. And it is certainly the case that if you go look through YouTube, Etsy is the platform that tends to get the most coverage when it comes to how AI AI-generated products can help people with their side hustle. So it's clear that this AI-generated product and content problem is one that platforms are just going to have to deal with in the years going forward. Lastly today, China's AI frenzy continues with Alibaba announcing a new mid-journey DALI stable diffusion style text-to-image generator. Presenting at the World Artificial Intelligence Conference in Shanghai, Alibaba Cloud presented a new image generator that will initially be available to their enterprise customers. Now, individually, this isn't a surprising piece of news, but it just serves to reinforce how much the race for new AI models and products is a global one. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying it, do me a favor and go check out the AI Breakdown newsletter. You can get it at the aibreakdown.beehive.com, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.